name of Jesus written in her forehead is right there in Gethsemane. He paid for it right there on, on the cross. That blood, was, but it first started shedding in Gethsemane and strong crying with tears, supplication and prayers to him that was able to save him from death. Save him from death. So I think he came, he was born to die. Yeah, save him from death. Save him from death. Now let's flip it on the other side. And everybody that will be in him from death. And he was heard in that he feared God. Sanctification. What did it cost God? Everything. <laughs> the blood there sanctified right there. The body, soul, spirit, and then that, then that man went to the cross and literally died and the last drop of blood fell off his toe. Then God took that middle wall of partition. That veil went from top of the bottom take the middle, middle wall of partition thereby making one new man. Of ordinances. Abolishing the ordinances thereof. Take a look at it. Wait a minute. He's the son of God. Take a look at verse 8. Though he were a son. That's a capital S-O-N. Fullness of almighty God. Yet learned, perfected he. Learned, learned there doesn't mean, well, he's in a process of learning. Learned means there it's forever done, finished, completed, learned. If I learned an instrument, that means I learned and perfected everything that could ever be done on it from here to eternal world without end. He learned it. Not a process of learning, but learned it. He learned obedience. He perfected obedience there, which is unto death. He learned obedience. In other words, everything that ever could be done in obedience, he did it. He learned obedience. He learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Why would he put things there? Why did it just say, Though he were a son, yet learned the obedience by suffering. Every level of glory in the faith and the substance of things hoped for was paid for right there on that cross. Not Passover, Lamb, bread, first fruit, Pentecost was, Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, Feast of Tyre, everything and every glory that's ever been done and ever will be done through the body of Christ was paid for right there. Amen. Those things which he suffered. So that means he suffered for everything that we will ever get in faith and some of things and by the things which he suffered means he's paid for right there. Huh? Isn't it? Now, well, here we go. We're talking about sanctification tonight. And it says here, by the things which he suffered. Whoa. And be made perfect. Made perfect? I thought it was already perfect. Ain't nobody perfect but God. Oh, well, I say here. Jesus was the only sinless man, but they was perfect, they were perfect in their own generation. So those that are striving, pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. That's the mind you have for perfection. Always striving, pressing, pushing through the compelling of the Holy Ghost, Toward the mark, for the prize, not the beginning of the race, the ending of the race, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. As many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if you be any other wise minded than that, Christ, God will reveal that even unto you if you seek it. Sanctification. Well, then he goes on and says, became the author of eternal salvation for him. No, unto all them that obey him. He became the author of salvation. The author, the beginning of it. The 
The author is the father of it. That those obtain it by obedience. Why would you have to obey? Because it has to be obtained. Well, it's a free gift. Yes, it's a free gift. The gift can sit over there all day long until you go over and you receive it. It'll sit there as a free gift, but you'll never use it. You have to receive that gift. Somebody said, well, I got the Holy Ghost and I got it whenever I believe because it said, repent, be baptized in one in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I got it as soon as I got baptized. No, you didn't. Maybe some of you did, but most of you didn't. Why? Because you have to receive the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is given to them that obey him. So as long as you smoke cigarettes, suck back, fuss, cuss, backbite, manipulate, conniving little, conniving little girls, manipulating, and boys, you'll never get anything from God. Not an ounce of nothing. Not a pound of nothing. Not an ounce of nothing. Hallelujah. You got to obey this thing. Well, for them that obey. And then he said, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Woo, now we got a lot of things of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing you are dull of hearing. Why? Because the salvation is to all them that obey him. That's a ministry of Melchizedek. To all them that obey him. Now, I'm not going to go into that priesthood. I'm going into sanctification. And why? If you want this and what it's going to take. Many call, few chosen. Why? Because they don't obey. Go to. Then he goes on about the, uh, teach you again, first principle of the oracles of God. He goes on. Go to chapter 7 and verse. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Let's start with verse twenty-six. Start with verse twenty-five. My God, this year. Start with verse twenty-four. But this man, it's all good and gets gooder. Good, gooder, and goodest. This man, 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 be because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he's able to save them from the guttermost to the uttermost. Somebody said, Brother Barry, it doesn't say the guttermost. Well, it's from wherever you are to the uttermost. You want a little evangelistic message? Go from guttermost to the uttermost. Right there. There's your message. That come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Why? He's talking about the cross and the days of his flesh as a man that died on the cross, the Son of God who gave himself for you. So he's talking about the things done where? In his flesh. Not up there sitting on the right of, of, of God Almighty, sitting down in the throne, being glorified back to himself to where he was before, before he ever took on flesh. It's not what we're talking about. We're talking about in the days of his flesh, being made perfect out by suffering. Sanctification. Bless the Lord God. Sanctification. Amen. For such a high priest became us. This man. Because he continued to have an unchangeable. He was able to save them to the uttermost. He makes an intercession for us. The Holy Ghost. For such a high priest became us who is holy, harmless, sub undefiled, separate from sinners. And made higher than the heaven. Higher than the heavens? That's exactly right. The heavens of heavens. Who needed not daily as those high priests offer up sacrifice for his own sins, then for the people, then for the peoples, and then for the peoples. For this he did what? When he offered up himself. Amen. All you got to do is get in him. Through him, by him, in him. In Christ. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. But the word of the oath, by two immutable things, that God is not a man he can lie, so a man he should repent. 
in that he is, that God cannot lie, he's faithful. True, trustworthy. He's faithful and true. Number one, he's true and he's faithful and brilliant. There's two things by which he's, two attributes he swear by himself, faithful and true. And he's too immutable, unchangeable, everlasting. Attributes of God he swore by himself because he could swear by no greater, greater he swear by himself. In a court of law, you would swear on the Bible. God swear by himself. And that is impossible for him to lie, and he is unchangeable and faithful to bring his word. Faithful and true. Now, but the word with the oath, which was since the law, maketh the son who is what? Consecrated. How long? How? 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 By the blood. His vesture dipped in blood. No greater love. What is love? Blood flow. I don't know. This is by which he's consecrated forevermore. By the shedding of his own blood. So God moved on this man so broken, humble, and contrite that he literally lays down his life. The Spirit of God moves to this spirit in that soul with strong crying and tears, literally so strong, so such an agony, so such a travail, so such a, the birth pangs that blood popped out of his forehead, a sweat, great drops of blood from his forehead. I had never seen anybody that kind of agony. And I've seen some people in real agony. I've seen people in real pain. So have you. But I ain't never seen nothing like that. Let's talk about sanctification for a minute. Can that love be done away with? No, because hereby perceive the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Therefore, we have to lay down our lives for the brother. Take a look over here at Hebrews. We've got to come over here. Hebrews 10, once again, Hebrews 10. We're going to be coming back to this four or five times. Hebrews 10. He's talking about a priesthood. He's talking about making the comers to him perfect. Making them perfect. Making them the quick. He is the quickening spirit that makes us perfect. But there's one verse that I want you to underline. It's verse 14. For by one offering, the cross, the cross of Jesus. If you ever get anything on consecration and dedication and sanctification, this is it. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Sanctified. Well, sanctified means set apart. Well, so does Pharisee. <laughs> means set apart, separate. Same thing. The only difference is the spirit you got in you, which is broken and contrite or proudful. It's, it's set apart, all right. They're the elite group, have nothing to do with everybody else because they think they're better than everybody else. That's a Pharisee spirit. I'm smarter than you, better than you. I'm holier than you. That's Phariseeical. That's Pharisees. Consecration by sanctification is the same word. The only difference is it has a broken, contrite spirit and serves the body of Christ in blood flow with strong crying and tears. With strong crying and tears. Some of us said, I couldn't weep in front of my children. They think that I'm the wimpy man. <laughs> you ain't never going to reach a soul in your life. <laughs> You'll never reach a soul in your life. He that goeth forth weeping, strong crying, weeping, bearing precious seeds, seed of the Word of God, shall doubtless come again, bringing his sheaves with him. 
You get to somebody that's got a travail or love for somebody else, they'll get into strong travail. I hadn't seen it much in the last decades. I hadn't seen it much at all. Old time churches, they would get in there, cry out to God, there'd be sweat. They'd be sweat, tears flying, snot everywhere. <laughs> you had to have, oh, 20 boxes of uh, Kleenex at the altar because everybody's going to wear them out in one night. You can see it no more. You know why? Because iniquity is abounding. I love a many's wax coat. And wax and coat, you ain't got them saved. They ain't sanctified. Ha! <laughs> said, I'm living for God. And yeah, you ain't never shed a prayer, shed a tear and a prayer for a lost soul. You ain't living for God. You kidding yourself. You kidding yourself. You kidding yourself. He that wins souls is wise. Why? Because you have a burden of, for lost souls through the love for a lost soul. Not for the body of Christ, for a lost soul. Love your enemies. Do good to them that despitefully use you. Bless and curse not. Have you watered it with your tears? Well, I forgave him. He hit me over, I turned the other cheek. Now, is that it? Have you watered it with your tears? Have you got in travail? Have you cried out to God, Lord, save that soul that's going to hell? No. No, yet. I doubt it's to say just one, maybe two in here that has. Hallelujah. I just, I'd be winching with but I'm not a betting man. But I love God. Yeah, well then why don't you let the Spirit of God move through you, the Holy Ghost will move through you, Jesus will move through you. Find someone. That's the reason he said, call for the morning women. Somebody said, well, that left the men out, thank God. He said, you men, you men are bowed over as in travail and you have not brought forth. You've brought no deliverance in the earth, men. There were childs. You've got no deliverance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's talk about sanctification. Let's talk about sanctification. Sanctified means to be set apart. Holy for God's use. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. It would have been nice if he had just said for by one offering he hath perfected forever them. Stop it right there, but he didn't. Who? Who? Those that are sanctified. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Well, let's see here. How did it happen here? Take a look at John 10. And we'll talk about a little bit of what sanctification really means, set sanctified. Take a look at John 10. Hallelujah. I ain't going to keep you long. And I'm just going to tell you what moves God. No tears. Somebody said, I don't have to cry taco doll tears. Then you don't have to nothing to water that seed with the bear of that precious seed. What are you going to water it with? With your water hose out there in the yard? It's your spirit that becomes one with God and a travail for souls. He loved the souls so much he died for them, for every man. Well, I say the prayer, and God did it, and he moved on it. God answered my prayer. Thank God he did. He answers a lot of people's prayers. <laughs> but are you in God? Just because he answered a prayer for you doesn't mean you're in him. There's going to be many, many people that prayed long, long, long prayers. Never will see the Lord. Never will see his glory. How do you know you're sanctified? Thank God I'm saved, sanctified, and on my way to hell. How do you know you're sanctified? John 10, verse 36. Now, you've heard this a thousand times. I know you have. I and my father are one. 
The Jews got mad at him, going to stone him. Jesus answered, many good works I've done. What good? Why did you stone me? Jews answered, for, you know, for a good work we stoned not, but for blasphemy. You being a man, you make yourself God. That's exactly right, friend. Now, look at verse 34. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law that I said you are gods? Judges, this is a place that I have set, 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 set aside, a place prepared for you that you may see my glory. You may see my face. You may see my glory. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, judges, and the scripture cannot be broken, you underline verse 36, say you of him whom the father, now watch this now, why would he say father there? Because he didn't say God, why would he use the office father? Because the father is sending the son. Why? Because the father has emptied out of glory in a literal made himself of no reputation. The word, the Holy Ghost made flesh, you know what I mean? Made flesh as the only begotten monogamy, son of God. What are you saying there, Brother Beard? I'm saying because the father, if you got a father, you got a son. Father's creator of all spirits. But it's a son, capital S-O-N, because say ye of him, him. Say ye of him. Say ye of him. Not him. Say you of him. Look at me. Say ye of him, not him. Say ye of him whom God, the Father, has sanctified and sent into the world. How did he send himself into the world? Made of a woman, made and under the law of the seed of the woman. Galatians 4, verse 4. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. How? Made of a woman. Made and under the law. Not where the, the father looks at the son and says, Son, go down there and die in an eternal sonship. That's baloney. That'll carry your soul to hell. That will carry your soul to hell where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Say ye of him whom the Father, the Father has sanctified. He uses that office of the Spirit there in the relation because he that hath a son hath a Father also. Say ye whom have the Father hath, hath what? Hath, so underline it, hath, 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 sanctified. The Father hath sanctified. They hath perfected for them them that are sanctified. The Father hath sanctified Amen. and sent into the world. What does he say? That I sin, I blaspheme, because I said, I am, that I am the Son of God. Amen. He didn't say because, uh, because I said I'm the Son of God. Because I am. <laughs> I tell you what you do. Get you a Bible one time, separate Bible from this one. Which it's a good exercise. Go through there from the Old and New Testament, underline everything that God says I am. I am, I am, I am that I am. And underline that I am. And every time he says I am and I am God. That's a great revelation. And you can preach until the Lord comes out of that and be right on track. <laughs> Thou bless me because I said, I am. I am that I am the Son of God. And I also has the Father who is a Son, who is a Father, who is a Son, who is a Father, say who is a liar. But he that denied that Jesus is the Christ, the Holy Ghost, Amen. he is Antichrist that had denied both the Father and the Son. Amen. John, 1 John, 1 John 2. 
Where's John 2, 22? Hot! Now I'll throw you a bullet pass. You catch that ball, you go to hell. 1 John 2, 22. If you ever get anything in your spirit, you better get that in there. God has sanctified. Not only God, are we talking about Jehovah? No, we're talking about the Father. The Father has sanctified and sent into the world that I blaspheme because I said, I am that I am. I am the one and only. Yours truly, God Almighty, manifest in the flesh. Amen. <laughs> sanctified. Now, let's take it on. John 17, Jesus is praying, Father, make them one, even as we're one, goes on, da 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 yeah, yeah, you've heard it a thousand times. And I'm in you and you and may make them perfect in one, that they, where I am, they may be there, they may be also, and see my glory! John 17. If you will, please take a look at verse 19. Now, we've got to go 17, 17. We can't leave out 17, 17, because 17, 17. 17, 17. Somebody said, I can't remember verses. Just remember John 17, 17. 17 is the work of God. John 17, chapter 17, verse. is going to give you the 153 fish and what brings souls. Amen. Sanctify them. Matter of fact, come back on up to verse 12. While I was with them, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Not my name, thy name. Why? Because I'm a man, I'm going through thy name, Father. Those that thou gavest me, I've kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, O God. I'm not coming beside you. I'm not coming around you. I'm coming to you. I came from you, I go back to you. I'm going to sit down with you in your throne. And where I was, and where I was, that glory I had before the world was, I'm coming back to that same glory. All of it. I'm coming back to you. I come to you, God. And these things, those are the things of faith, I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled. Where? In themselves. What's joy in the and full of glory? The Holy Ghost. I have given them thy word. And the world hath had them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them! Now this is an effectual working of the Holy Ghost flowing in and through the body of Christ. Amen. It's not a dormant word. It's not stagnant. It's dynamic. It's moving. It's a power of God, the effect of the cross put in the world 2,000, some over 2,000 years ago. And it's still flowing today. Great! Grace! Grace unto it! And grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace! I have. Given them thy truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Sanctify them through. Through. Notice that. Through. 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 Let's put through. T-H-R-O-U-G-H. Not through like I threw a ball. Through. In, through, it means through every cell you got. Amen. Sanctify them through the flow of the truth, through you, the believer, through, so the Holy Ghost and fire. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Who? This man. This man will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire whose fan is in his hand and he will through lead. Come on. Amen. Amen. Purge, purge, sanctify, purge, 
sanctify his floor. Where's the floor? Where the feet meet. We the feet generation. <laughs> thoroughly. It didn't say thoroughly. It said thoroughly. Thank you. Thoroughly. Hallelujah. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Watch it here. As I sent them in the world, even so I also sent them to the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself. And for their sakes I sanctify myself. And for their sakes, and you underline verse 19, and for their sakes, for their sakes, for their sakes, not for the sake of God, for their sakes, for our sakes, not for the sake of Jesus, for our sakes, for their sakes, our sakes. For our sakes, for our sakes, for their sakes, uh, I sanctify myself. Is that myself God over here? Watch it now. Is that myself over here or myself here?